Hi guys, in this video I'll go through some accessibility features in Windows 11 version 21H2. There have been some updates to some of the features. I'll leave timestamps in the description so you can jump to the section that interests you most. Let's jump into it. To find the accessibility settings, you can either press Windows key and I, and then click accessibility down the left hand side here, or close that for a second, come down to the start menu, click on the settings icon and then to choose the accessibility. Each section is broken down into easy sections, like vision, hearing and interaction. We'll go for each section. Let's start with the text size. This is all size in the text. I'll give you an example. So if we turn this all the way up to maximum and then press apply, as you can see, all the text on the left hand side is a lot larger, easier to read. Scroll back down, we'll hit apply, change it back. To get back to the main accessibility menu, you can either click accessibility up here, or you can press the back arrow here, whichever suits you. I'm going to press the accessibility up here. When we go down to visual effects. Visual effects, you've got scroll bars that used to be down the left hand side in Windows 10. You can turn that on and off. I'm using a virtual box that don't currently work. And for you, if you switch that on, you'll see the scroll bars down the side. Transparency effect, if you look down here at the bottom, you can see the taskbar. You can turn the effects off on that, so they're not so transparent. And turn them back on just so you can see again. Animation effects, this is good to turn off if you've got a slower computer. You don't really want the effects on, so you can turn those off. So when you're clicking on things, it just pops straight up. There's no kind of glide in and glide out. I'll turn that back on for now. Notification times as well, this is important. Sometimes you get a notification pop up down here in the corner. You only see it for five seconds. If you want to see it for longer, you can set the timer for that one as well. And then you've got some related settings down here. We won't go into these because they're covered by other sections, but you can play with these as well. Click back on the accessibility. Mouse pointer and touch. It's great when you can change your mouse pointer. If you have vision problems or sight problems and you're struggling to see a pointer, you can change it to a black one. You can also change it to inverted. So as it passes over things, it changes color. Some people prefer that. You can even change it to a colored one as well. So you can choose your favorite color. So it's not in this block here. You can choose the plus button here and then choose your favorite color from the slider. And then press done. And then there you go, colored pointer. You can also increase the size of your pointer here as well, so you can't quite see it. And I'll decrease this back down. There you go. Down here you got touch indicator as well. So show the circle when the screen when it's touched. So say you got a touch screen device and you tap it, it'll put a little circle around it just to draw your attention to it as well. Um, you can also make the circle darker and larger by tapping on this, tick that box. And then down here we've got some more related settings. We're going to come to those in a second. So you can either press the back arrow or the accessibility. Let's move down to text cursor. So the text cursor is basically when you're in Microsoft Word or any kind of search box or anywhere you type, it brings up this little icon here. And what you can do is customize this. So you can make it significantly large on the top and the bottom. There you go, as you can see in the preview here. Or you can change the color if the color doesn't suit you. There you go. Again, you can choose like a custom color. Choose your custom color. Click on done. And there you go. I'm going to put mine back on the default purple. And you've also got the cursor thickness, that's the line down the middle here. So you've got text cursor thickness, so wherever you click somewhere in, in the text, it's normally quite a thin line, some people struggle to see that. So you can basically turn that up, make it thicker, and smaller. So you've got to adjust this to your own settings. Okay, that's it for the text cursor. Let's go back to the accessibility. Let's go to the magnifier. And the magnifier, click that on. 
And wherever your mouse is on the screen, if you move your mouse to the edges of the screen, it will magnify it, which is really handy for some users. Some users struggle with it, you know, pushing the mouse to the edge of the screen, so there are alternatives. So you, let me turn this off a second. You can also set the zoom level as well, so it zooms in by 200% every time. Or you can fine tune this as well, you can turn it down so it zooms in by 100% or 300 whatever you whatever suits your needs you've also got the view so we just looked at full screen you've got docked view so if we turn this on you get a box at the top of the screen here so wherever your mouse is it'll point towards it it'll show it in the box above some people prefer that one what i personally prefer is the lens view so wherever your mouse is that's why it magnifies and it leaves the other part of the screen alone. Okay, we'll just turn that off for a second. Okay, so down here at the bottom, you've got inverted colors in this section as well. Because I'm in a virtual box, this doesn't work for me, but what it does, it literally inverts the colors of your screen, changes back to white and white to black. You can try this on your own machine, see if this suits you. So the other section you got is smooth edges of images and text. So if we turn this off and click on start, you can see it's not as quite as clear on the text. We turn that back on. Just smooths out all the edges and the images and the fonts makes it look better for you, easier to read. You got a reading shortcut that's covered by narrator later in the video and some more related sentences down the bottom. So one more feature I would like to show you is you turn it on. And on the bar here, you've got this little symbol here that says read from here by clicking on the cog icon. Uh, you can basically uh, slow the speed down if it's too fast and you can change the, the, the voices. I'll show you this when we get to the narrator section. Let's click on accessibility. Let's go down to color filters. So this is great if you've got any kind of color blindness or any issues with your eyes around colors. You can change the screen to suit you. So if we turn this on, see the whole screen goes gray. Let's start at the top here. We got a red and green uh, for our green weakness. This one's for red weakness. This one's for blue and yellow. We've got gray scale, gray inverted and inverted. I'll just turn it off for now. There's also a shortcut for the filters as well. So if you press the Windows key, Control and C to turn the filters on and off. You can turn those on and off. So you need to turn the colors on first. Okay, I'll turn that off, turn that off. And then here we've got some ready color settings. We'll come to these in a second. That's it for the color filters. Choose the one that suits you. Click on accessibility. And we've got contrast themes. This is for high contrast. I'll show you. I'll give you an example. So if we turn high contrast on, static, apply, get this very sort of black and white dark contrast. And then you've got desert as well to show what this looks like. That's more of a white base theme. And this is more of a gray base theme for dusk. And then you've got night sky, which is completely dark. You can also edit these as well. So if you find the yellow writing and the purple doesn't work for you, click on edit. And then you can click on any one of these colors. And then you can customize it to whatever you need. Press done. And when you're ready, click Save As, and you can give your new theme a name as well. So you can customize it to your own benefit. Okay, I'm going to turn this back to normal and press the Apply button, just for the rest of this tutorial. So the contrast theme is really good, especially if you've got sight problems. It does help you out a lot. If you click on Accessibility again, then we go down to Narrator. So as soon as you turn it on, it gives you a brief introduction to Narrator and some of the settings. I'll show you that now. So 
Setting, Narrator Window, Narrator Heading Level 1. Welcome to Narrator. This is Narrator Home, where you can get help, access your settings, and learn about new features. Narrator is a screen reader that describes aloud what's on your screen, so you can use that information to navigate your device. To start or stop Narrator, press the Windows logo key and Control and Enter. Explore the sections below to get started. Quick start, button, learn the basics of narrator, alt, q. So what you can do is you can turn this off, turn this little menu off. It starts, I'm going to leave mine on for now. But I'm going to exit narrator just so I can go through some other settings for you. But you press minimize if you want to keep it active. Exit narr exiting narrator. So you've also got a keyboard shortcut for narrator up here. So you press the Windows key, Control key and Enter key to turn the rate on and off. You've also got the rate at home as well, you can access to different settings. So you can start the rate when Windows starts as well. So I'm going to turn that off for me, but you leave it on if you want it all the time. You've got a complete guide to the rate here and the rate at home. I'll leave the links to those in the description as well. Moving on down the settings, you got a choice of voices. Currently it's set to Microsoft George, English United Kingdom. And then you've got like Hazel Suzanne, Hazel Desktop, Zero Desktop. And you can also customize, like I said previous, um, you can also slow the speed down a little bit. So if we turn it back on briefly, you can get an idea what that sounds like. Settings window, narrator, toggle switch, on. Exiting narrator. Okay, so as you can hear, that's a little bit slower. You can also adjust the pitch to make it higher or lower, and the volume as well. You can also get it to lower the volume of other apps. So say if you've got music on in the background or something playing in the background, you can basically turn this on and it will dip the volume of that while it's reading the instructions and then put the volume back to what it was before the instruction was read out. You can also set your output device. So you've got headphones. This is where you choose them. I'm going to leave mine on speakers for now just so we can record for this video. Scroll down a bit further to verbosity. This is basically... Uh, Posh word for level, so how much control you want. So currently it's set to all control details, so these are controls here. You can set it to text only, some controls or all the controls. Again, it's down to personal preference. Just set these to different settings and see what works for you. You also have the context level, buttons, controls as well. So anything immediate is anywhere I have my mouse now. Full content, a new control is anything the window opens and then another window opens. And full context of all the new controllers, it reads the box you were in and then the box you've gone to. Having to announce what type. So letters, numbers, and punctuation, words. You can get to save the function keys as well, and the arrow keys and shift keys. It just depends on how much detail you want. Feel free to turn these on and off and have a play. You've got a narrator key as well to turn it on and off, like we have the shortcut at the top. You can either choose the insert key on its own, caps lock key on its own, or caps lock and insert. The shortcut, if you want to see where that is, scroll to the top of the page. It's the Windows key, control, and then caps lock or insert. Okay, so moving down a little bit. You've got the on touch activate keys when I lift my finger. This is great if you've got dexterity issues. So basically, instead of accidentally knocking the key next to you, it will only activate the key when you lift your finger off. So read and interact with the screen is great. If you want to read text out or you're not familiar with certain words, you can put your mouse over them and read them out to you. Keyboard layout is kind of the new standard one with Windows 11. There was a legacy one from previous versions of Windows 7, Windows 8. You can switch to whichever one you prefer. Show the narrator cursor. Cursor is where the narrator is focused on your screen. So say if I click a word here and it's reading it, it will put a little box around it as it reads individual words. Move my text with the cursor the narrator reads. Yeah, it will actually move your cursor across. And then sync the narrator cursor on system focus. So if you've got system focus enabled, you can basically, it'll move the cursor along with it. And navigation mode, you've got normal and advanced. 
The advanced setting currently doesn't have anything. I think they're going to add some more features later on for this. And then also you've got the braille section as well. So if you've got a braille reader, you can if you turn it on and then click on add braille display. Um, you can then basically choose yours from the drop down box here. I don't have one of these devices, so I can't show you how this works. But you can also choose your input language, the table, your output language, and your notification timeout as well. Okay, to get back to the accessibility, let's go back to narrator. Scroll down a little bit again. Okay, so this is an experimental feature they're trying out. Outlook tends to have a lot of text in different places. It tends to read out all the controls instead of just the email you want it to read. So you can turn this on and see if it improves that. You've also got sync settings as well. So you can sync your settings across all your devices. So say you're trying to set it up on your Windows PC and then go set it up on your tablet or your, your other laptop. You can just click on this. And then sign in settings were set updated. So if you sign in with the same account, Microsoft account on all these devices, all your settings will be there for you. So you're setting up individually. So get image descriptions, page titles and popular links. So this is based on websites so that if people have the images, they put a title or a tag behind it. And then that is basically read out. It can be quite distracting, especially if you're trying to read long text. So you can turn this on and off. Automatically saying diagnostic performance there. This is back to Microsoft just to help them work out what features they need to add, what features need to be updated. And then there's a privacy statement at the bottom. Okay. Let's move on to the next section. Let's scroll back to the top. Scroll down. Next one is hearing and audio. So mono audio mode combines the left and right channels to make it easier. You've got hearing aid on one particular side. Uh, it helps you focus a little bit better than trying to hear it in stereo. So you turn it on and off. You also flash my screen during audio notifications. So that will flash certain things such as the title bar or the active window, just the active window or the entire screen, just to get your attention. There are some related settings down here, which we've already covered in the previous sections. Click on accessibility again. So this is the text underneath. This is whenever you get on YouTube mainly, you see these kind of boxes underneath. So the default is white on black. Then you've got small caps. It takes a second for it to update. There we go. And then on large text. In the preview, it's changed again. You've got yellow on blue. And then what you can do then is click on edit. You have options. You can actually change the text to whatever you like. You can change it to a purple. There you go. And then you've got the background as well. So the background, the blue, you can't quite see. You change to black. And blue. Whatever really suits for you. Really experiment. Now you can also change the opacity and see-throughness. So you can basically and 75% you can still see some of the video behind it it's moving you can also change the window just about to see that on the edges change the opacity of that as well but you can change the color around the outside it's literally just a border around the edges here Okay, let's go back to text. And you can also name your caption style as well. So this is yellow and blue copy. You can call this my style. A couple other things you can do down here as well. You can also change the text to cursive if you want. Makes it curly. You can choose proportional. 
So again, it's, it's very customizable what, you, what your needs are. Every person will be different. So it's a case of play with the settings, see which one works for you. And then just to save it, you just come back to your captions, left click on the word, and then that's it. Your my style is saved as a style. If you save it, you don't like it, or you've created some settings, you think I don't really like this, you can delete it as well. Just press delete as long as yours is highlighted. Let's move on. Okay, we've got speech down here, window speech recognition while typing. So voice typing, you can press the Windows key plus H. This will activate the little microphone symbol. And then basically you can dictate to your machine what you'd like to say. So if you're not good at typing or you're not a speed typist, this may be a faster way of doing it, just to get your ideas down on paper. You can also turn on Windows speech recognition as well. That will basically improve the settings. Turn that on with the Windows logo key plus control plus S to turn on speech recognition on and off. It'll take you through this wizard. Click next. It'll ask you what you want to do, what type of microphone is highlighted. So you can say you've got a headset or you've got a desktop mic or other style of mic. I'm going to say I've got a desktop mic. You're next. And then it gives you where to position it as well, which is really useful information. And then click next. And then I'm using this for this video, so it's going to be pretty low. It's not going to register past anything past that. And then click next. It wants you to read the text here. Next. Microphone is ready to go. Next. You can improve the computer's ability to recognize spoken words by allowing the computer to review documents and emails uh, in your search index. The computer will learn words and phrases to better understand you when you talk. So this is down to your personal preference. Some people are okay with that, some people are not. I'm going to say disable document review for now, just for this tutorial. And click next. So you can use manual activation mode by pressing the key or use voice activation mode, which is automatic. I'm going to put it on manual. And then you've got a reference sheet as well. You can print off if you've got a printer just by clicking this button here. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Click next. And then you get the option of running it on startup every single time your computer starts. I prefer to start mine manually, so I'm going to uncheck this. Click next. And then we're just going to go skip the tutorial. You can start the tutorial, it shows you how to use it. I've already been through this, but you go through it. I've already been through this, so I'm going to skip it for now. Okay, so that's the speech recognition. Then you got speech and microphone related settings. So again, this takes you to more detailed version of what we saw earlier with the voices, your microphone, your speech and language. It's important to set your proper country as well in here. If there's a drop down box for you, choose yours. Mine says English United Kingdom. And then click on the back arrow. Back arrow again. Takes us back to the accessibility options. Click on accessibility. Scroll down keyboards so sticky keys if you ever accidentally held down a key on the keyboard it tries to trigger the sticky keys you can move these off these are great for certain tasks but uh, can be annoying for other ones this is where you can disable them so if you press the shift key five times or more it'll trigger the sticky keys you can turn that feature off it shows the sticky keys icon on the taskbar you can turn that off as well lock the shortcut keys when pressed in a row twice Turn the sticky keys on when two keys are pressed at the same time. Play a sound when the shortcut keys are pressed and released. So what you can do is if you press the caps lock for argument's sake, it'll make a noise. And then when you turn the caps lock off, it'll make a different noise just so you know you've accidentally turned it on. This is great for beginners. So you've got filter keys as well. So filter keys is basically if you accidentally touch a key, you didn't really mean to do it. Um, it you can turn this on and then ignore that keystroke for now. So you yeah, ignore unintended keystrokes, bounce keys, ignore quick strokes, slow keys, beep when keys are pressed and accepted. So yeah, again, play with some of these settings. 
Si ahí quedó. Toggle keys. So this is all about the sounds I was talking about. So I turn this on. If I press my caps lock, you can hear like a high pitch noise. And turn it off again. Makes a different noise. Turn that off. You also got notification preferences as well. So notify me when sticky filter is turned on or any other keys. I tend to leave these on in case I accidentally trigger these. On screen keyboard as well. So if we turn this on, give it a second. You got a full on screen keyboard. So if you have a touch screen device, this makes typing a lot easier, especially if the built in one's not brilliant. So if you need to input something and your current keyboard and your laptop's not working, you can also use this as well. And you can also turn on the caps lock. Do your tab keys as well. You can see it down here, it's jumping down. Shift keys as well, they all work. And then put in community letters and characters. So I'll close that for now. Your underlying keys, access keys are underlined even when not holding Alt. So the access keys is really useful to have. It are underlined even when not holding the Alt. Previously you had to hold down the Alt key to find out where the shortcuts were. These will be turned on by default. Then off for now. Use the print screen button to appear out of screen sniping. So if you turn this one on, and then on your keyboard, press the print screen. You can draw a shape around something, say this box here, and it will instantly take a screenshot of that. This is really handy to have, especially if you have any issues with your PC and you want to pass that to a computer technician, you can take a screenshot of what's wrong with the PC and then send that off to them in an email. I'll turn that feature off for now. So we got some more related settings down here that relate to the previous sections we've already covered. So if we go back to let's close this off first. So if we go back to the accessibility settings. Scroll down. We got mouse control. So we got you can use your generic keypad to move on your mouse pointer. So if you've got a full size keyboard, turn this on. You've got arrows on the keyboard on keys four, eight, six, and two. And you can use that as a mouse. This used to be they used to do it years ago before they had a proper mouse. So you can also hold the control key as well, speed up or slow down, the shift key to slow down and the control key to speed it up. When you're doing this, make sure you've got your scroll lock enabled on your keyboard and then you can use those keys to move around. I can't demo because I'm using the virtual box for this one. I'll turn that off for now. You got your mouse pointer, color and speed. This is what we covered previously. And you also got your mouse pointer speed and primary scrolling buttons as well. So if we come down to these, there we go. So you've got your primary button. So most mice are left click. But if you want to swap it to the right button instead, you can do that as well. So the left and right swapped over, inverted. The mouse pointer speed as well. You can turn that up to pretty quick. As you can see, it's quite fast. I'm only moving the same distance. If we turn it down, I'm moving the same distance with the mouse. Let's put that back in the middle. So you've also got a scroll wheel on the mouse. So you can scroll down multiple lines at a time. You can scroll down the entire screen at a time. It's entirely up to you. That's down to personal preference. You've also got the lines to scroll down at a time. So if you've got it on line setting, now you can say, okay, I want to skip like 10, 20, 50, all the way up to 100 lines at a time. It's great for larger documents, especially if you work in an office environment. Scroll in active windows when hovering over them. So that would be this. And then scroll in active windows. I'll turn that back off for now, just for this tutorial. You've got additional pointer icons, which we covered previously. Let's go back. Let's click on the back arrow up here. So we can go back to accessibility. Back again. Click on this. And then finally, we've got eye control or tracker control, as it's commonly called. If you have limited use of your hands, you can use it. If you've got the right hardware, you can use eye control. You can enable this. Switch it on. Because I don't have the hardware plugged in, I 
can't really demonstrate how this works. But basically the way it works, instead of using a mouse, where if you're looking on the screen, it'll move the mouse pointer to there, and certain gestures will basically trigger the mouse pointer to click on things and interact with your screen. So you've also got privacy settings down here for that as well. So you can choose who has access to the information, or you can let it improve the service if you want to. So you can choose who has access to the tracker on this device, and also which apps uh, have access to your eye tracker as well. Let's go back previously. To eye control, and then we go back on to accessibility. That's all the settings in Windows and accessibility. If you found this useful, please consider subscribing and smash that like button. See you on the next one.